last test tuning Miku game I discussed was a game for the PS3, which I did a vlog, vlog style review of because I didn't want to get clobbered on, con on a content ID. This time I'm doing a vlog style review of a Hatsune Miku game because I'm reviewing a title for the 3DS, Hatsune Miku Project Mirai DX. Gameplay wise, Hatsune Miku plays a lot like the game for the PS3 with some differences. You are pressing the face buttons of the 3DS or direct on the D-pad, and in some cases both, in time with the music, with the notes that you're going to input being pre displayed on the top screen, and alternative touch inputs being shown on the bottom screen. Uh, this is a 3DS game, you also have the option to input, to control the game through the touch screen as well. Uh, it's just a dedicated touch screen mode. However, where the game changes things up from the PS3 game is how it's presented. In the PS3 game, notes during the song were displayed on screen by icons of the buttons on the PlayStation controller. X, triangle, circle, square, that sort of thing. When a series of notes were due to show up on screen, a void of those notes would appear on screen with fill in, filled in versions of those icons moving from off screen to reach those voids. Once a, the filled in version reached that void, you'd press the appropriate button on the D-pad. There would also be a little ticking clock on there. Once it went from 12 o'clock to 12 o'clock again, that's when you knew you need to press it then as well. An alternative way of helping you time your inputs. Occasionally, these icons would vary, though. You can't, so you couldn't just look at the void. With a slightly different version of the icon showing that you needed to press a corresponding button on the D-pad as well, in addition to the appropriate face button. This led to several, several problems as you did not necessarily know that you needed to hit a D-pad button in advance in, in terms of a significant warning depending on when you saw the icon come in based on the speed of the song and that sort of thing. And because the icons were recognizable, or the voids were recognizable due to negative space as opposed to positive space, and because some of the backdrops could be very, very bright and colorful, varying colors, causing your icons to be lost in the noise, you could end up missing a bunch of notes on accident. But this is also kind of made difficult by the fact that where the icons came in from off-screen were somewhat arbitrary. Sometimes you'd have a significant amount of lead time before the note coming in from off-screen reached the void over here. Sometimes you'd have your void here, and then the note would come up from the closest portion of the screen give you little to no notice. With the 3DS version, on the other hand, the notes appear on screen on something similar to the sort of rock band of Note Highway, except instead of a chunk of the screen with, the note, with just the notes coming down there, or something like with um, Dance Dance Revolution, where you have a grid, like one portion of the screen that is just dedicated to a sort of rain of notes or cascade of notes. There is more of a note path that kind of weaves in and out throughout the, throughout the screen with a clearly divine defined, clearly visible line that you can follow with your eyes and generally track, letting you know what the upcoming notes will be. And in turn, when you get to the inputs where it's D-pad plus a uh, face button, those inputs, it branches out to two lines rather than changing the icon. So you have sufficient notice in advance of, okay, A, A, B, A, A, B, A, A, B, a and left, or what have you, or A and down, actually, because it's usually corresponding up, down, left, right button. So A and down, you, know, you can tell, okay, it's branching out now. I'm going to need to be ready to hit the down button or a directional button, particularly based on the pattern that you're facing. So if it's a lot of heavy A, A, Bs, it may be A and down or B and um, left or what have you. Just give an example. Further, the icons are also presented differently here. On the PS3 version, and I presume also in the Vita as well, it's, and it's a void. It's a shape, or a lack, or, yeah, it's a shape, either a brightly colored shape or a lack of picture shape on the screen in the form of whatever the directional pad button is on your controller. Here, because the letters don't work that same way, because Nintendo uses letters as opposed to shapes. Instead, it is bright is, is brightly colored circles with the letter on it. And consequently, it makes a situation where 
the inputs are clearly vis actually made in a way even more visible on screen than otherwise because you're dealing with big circles and a big constant steady shape that is recognizable on screen and cannot be lost as easily in the background. So if you're again if you're pressing face button and direction you're going to tell what your directional is because the arrows that you're encountering uh, as far as the D-pad inputs are not being represented or duplicated in the background. Likewise with the shapes for the uh, face buttons on your 3DS controller. And the colors involved as well also are usually not used in the backgrounds so you're not getting at that degree of loss of input and loss of information. This is not to say the game is without issues. I particularly had problems with the touch controls. I played, it, played the game with both touch inputs and the face button inputs, and I found the face button inputs worked better. This is in part because for the touch inputs, the way it worked is your lower portion of the screen is broke on the touchpad is broken up into chunks, and you had to touch different portions of that screen based on what the inputs were on the top of the screen. Same sort of thing as with like your D-pad input with your um, face button inputs or what have you. And then for arrow related inputs, you are pressing, you are swiping in a particular direction, perhaps in addition to touching in a particular area. So say touch in red and then swipe up, down, left, right, diagonal, what have you. And I think what makes this not work as well is it requires you to split your attention much more between the upper and bottom lower screens because you're touching in defined areas. Put this in comparison. Diet Rhythm Final Fantasy for the DS and 3DS is a game which also is a rhythm based game for the 3DS with different options for D-pad for D-pad and face button controls and touchpad controls. What makes the touchpad controls work so well there is the inputs are more clearly defined. Tap or hold then swipe in any number of directions, up, down, left, right, diagonal, that sort of thing. And the way it amplifies the difficulty is instead of chopping up your touchpad area into more sectors, which is how it's done for Project Mirai DX, instead it's you're doing your inputs more quickly, just requiring more reflexes, and adding more directional inputs that you have to deal with as well. So instead of so lower difficulties, up, down, left, right, higher difficulties, we're getting the full intermediate directions up right, up left, down right, down left. So we've got diagonals as well. But it doesn't care where on the touch screen you do it. Do it in the middle, do it in the left, do it in the right. As long as you're hitting the touch screen, touch screen and doing the correct inputs, you're fine. Party Mirai DX does care. And that's the problem. You have to basically have your eyes in two places at once, which is rough. There are a few additional issues as well. While Project Mirai DX, unlike Project, the first Project Diva F for the PS3, has an English interface, but it doesn't have its English song lyrics, which hurts some of the appreciation of the songs. Um, they have the lyrics in Romanji, which is fine, I guess, but oh, there are not a significant number of songs on here where they have something of a narrative to them, and the descriptions of the song in the game catalog highlights these points that this is a song with a significant narrative to it and in some cases this song is the narrative from this other song told from a different perspective but you don't actually have the lyrics of the songs in English so you don't know when that what that narrative is either while you're playing it or when you go back to rewatch the video and this is actually removes the incentive to go back and rewatch the videos. Now, theoretically, I could go onto YouTube later and hunt down a fan subtitled video of the song, but that's something from outside of the game. And if you require something from outside the game to appreciate the game, particularly if it's not something from your site or something that's directly connected to your game through, like, for example, the Destiny lore system, then it's a step in the wrong direction. It's not something that's helping the appreciation of the game. Additionally, while the Japanese versions, it's, this is kind of a compilation of two titles into one, 
had more traditional promotional videos like the Project Diva games. Project Mirai DX, in particular the US version, has new videos of super deformed versions of the characters performing the songs. I get why they did this, because it's a situation where I can click on the 3D for the 3DS, and I will have actual depth of, video, depth of field. It's something that's a 3D environment that the 3DS can handle, as opposed to a just flat 2D video. But the videos for Project Diva apps hooked me into the song for, particularly with some of the more abstract and narrative-focused videos, and that could have been similarly interesting here. But that aside, Project Variety X is, as far as gateways into Vocaloids and music created using the Vocaloid software goes, it's the better gateway, it's better than Project Diva F was. It's still not quite what I'm looking for. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. That said, there is still, as of this recording, one Vocaloid game that I have not played that has received a U.S. release, Project Diva F2 for the PS3 and Vita. That game may have what I need. From what, from what I understand of the feature set, it includes English lyrics for the tracks. It includes an English interface. So, knock on wood, that's got what we need. That That is the sufficient gateway game that I'm looking for where if I'm going to introduce someone to Vocaloids, that's a game to point out if I'm going to introduce them through a game. Once again, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe to this channel. Subscribe and get you notified when future episodes come out. And liking lets me know that you enjoyed the episode. The video on the right will be of the previous episode of Nintendo Power Retrospectives, if you want to go see what I reviewed previously that on that show. And the video on the left will take you to the previous episode of Breaking It All Down, while well, you'll get to see what I covered there. And below that will be a link to my Patreon page if you wish to back the show. Backing the show can get you a mention in the credits, and also, depending on your level of support, you can determine what I do future Let's Plays of on Breaking It All Down and what else I review on that show as well. So go ahead and click on that, back the show. Also, backing the show helps me get the show out more often and improve the production quality of the show, which is good for everyone. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.